Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Let us know if you can hear and see us and everything looks good. You can pop in a question. Okay. All right, I can see heaps of you have started joining. Just let us know if everything's good and you can hear and see us. All right, it looks heaps like heaps of you are joining. We've still got one minute until we officially start. Okay, we'll just wait till all of you join. Okay, great. Well, I think we'll get started now. So hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We're a little bit squeezy in here, but I'd like to introduce our wonderful presenters today. We have Paul Holmes from our civil law team. Say hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and we've got Ian Donald here with us from AFCA. We're very lucky to have him here today in our office. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. All right, so before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on where we're airing from today. Uh, that is our legal aid office at 44 Herschel Street in Brisbane City. Um, I want to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And this is our disclaimer that this webinar is for community legal education purposes only. Please don't take it as legal advice and you can read that all for yourself there. Okay, and my name's Ellen Limerick and I'm the Community Legal Education Officer here at Legal Aid. So this webinar is being recorded um, and technical help is available at that phone number on the screen. Now I'd also like to show you where you can download today's PowerPoint slides. You need to go into your toolbar which is on the right hand side of your screen and there you'll see a section that says handouts. Now click handouts to open that section and you can download two items today. You can download our PowerPoint slides and you can also download uh, our AFCA handout, which we'll go through a bit more today as well and tell you what that's about. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, the way we're gonna run today is we're gonna have 40 minutes for the presentation then we're going to have 20 minutes at the end where Ian and Paul will be able to answer your questions. So please pop your questions in the question box when, when you have one, but we'll likely just answer them at the end. Okay, so we're going to start with a bit of a poll. Um, so let us know what area do you work in? Okay, are you from southeast Queensland? Far North Queensland, Regional Queensland, or are you from outside of Queensland? Okay, I'll give you a couple more seconds to get in your response. Okay, 
I can see most of you have voted there, so I'm going to close off that poll now. And you guys can all see the results on your screen now. So 36% of you are from Southeast Queensland, but we've got a huge proportion of you not from our corner of uh, Queensland. We've got some from far north, some from regional, and 18% from outside of Queensland. So welcome everyone. Okay, I want to do one more poll. And this is one, okay, so we'd like to know, how regularly do you help clients lodge an, or run an AFCA complaint? Okay, we're just collecting your responses. We'll give you a couple more minutes to put that in. Okay, I'm just going to close off that poll now and let's see. All right. So, 35% of you sometimes lodge a complaint, 29% um, hardly ever, and 35% have never done one before. Okay, so you should learn a lot from this presentation then. All right. So we're going to get back to the presentation now. I'm going to hand over to Paul to go through the outline and get started on the presentation. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. So welcome, everybody. Um, the plan, particularly just looking at that last poll, um, is we're going to spend maybe the first 15, maybe 20 minutes or so talking through how to run an AFCA complaint, what the process involves, then spend the next 20 minutes looking at this new jurisdiction that AFCA's got come Monday. Yes, all right. Uh, which I know Africa's looking forward to. <laughs> um, and then we'll go through the questions at the end. Please, if as we're talking questions pop up, just pop them into the question box and if we can answer them as we're going, we yes. will. Yep. But otherwise, if we can't, we'll address them at the end. Um, and Anne and I are planning to have a bit of a chat as, as we go along. So hopefully that will get us to the right spots and give you guys the knowledge that you're looking for. So I guess the starting point is, why would you make a complaint to Africa? Um, well, the, the, the big thing for consumers in particular is that the, the jurisdiction is free. It yep. costs no, cost nothing, unlike a, a court, uh, and there's no um, cost implications should uh, uh, the complainant not win. Um, but not only that, it's, a, it's an independent forum. Uh, it gives a, a, and it's efficient, um, and it's a, a um, quite, we go through quite a robust process and it gives uh, people the comfort of knowing that they've had independent eyes look at the issue that they may have in relation to financial services. Which is, which is really important because it was only November that AFCA started, wasn't it? Correct. And now it, um, it, it literally is an amalgamation of three uh, uh, predecessor schemes, which was the Financial Ombudsman Service, the uh, Complaints, uh, sorry, the Credit Investments Ombudsman and the um, Superannuation Complaints Tribunal. So uh, we have. Um, all of that experience to draw on. Mm. Uh, so it's not an entirely new, uh, new body um, in that sense. Um, however, yeah, but we do have an expanded jurisdiction and we're now looking at superannuation complaints, which as defined in the Corporations Act. Um, and uh, we have an expanded um, a monetary jurisdiction and we're able to award higher compensation awards. Sure, and and I guess one of, the, one of the important things for consumers to remember is because it's not like court, yes, the normal expectations they have of how court operates. It's, yes. it's less pressure on the well, in a sense. Correct, it's quite informal. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have to follow the rules of evidence and we don't, we, we, uh, we certainly don't um, ask witnesses to get into a witness box. We certainly don't cross-examine. Uh, it's usually done on the documents. Uh, mind you, we do talk to, uh, uh, to consumers and financial firms over the phone. Uh, we're quite big on uh, that phone communication um, to, to obtain information. Excellent. And the other great bit, at least I find, is people have options about how to lodge a complaint. Correct. It's a great online form, but you don't have to have any access. Exactly right. Now, uh, you can do it online, and it, it, when you hop on the uh, 
when you go to afca.org.au, one of the first, most prominent things that you'll see on that web page is a button that says make a complaint. Yep. Uh, and all you have to do is follow the props. Um, we can also, another way of doing it, um, if you're not particularly tech savvy, is to do it over the phone. Yep. Uh, we have some very helpful people um, who are quite experienced at dealing with uh, uh, consumers in particular, um, and they will uh, walk you through the process and they'll actually create the complaint as you're on the phone. Which I think is really important, particularly for people in regional areas who Correct. might not have ready access to the internet or the internet for various reasons. Exactly. Might not be the quickest. Correct. Oh, well, that's exactly right. And the fact that it's a 1 800 number means it doesn't cost anything yeah. either. Which is also <laughs> very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and another really important point to make here, too, is that under our rules, uh, AFCA is able, to, um, is able to assist in the creation of a complaint. Uh, which, which is really good. exactly walk, walk people through the issues that may be um, presenting while they're talking. Which is really important because yeah. the reality is around Australia, not everybody can get in to see uh, a lawyer like me or a financial counsellor or a community worker with experience in this area. Absolutely correct, uh, and that's uh, that's I'd say that's probably the big reason why that particular rule is in there. Excellent. All right. So as we started to cover, there's a whole wide range of stuff that. After we look at, my understanding is most of the complaints you get percentage-wise are banking and finance type Correct. complaints. Yeah, they would both be, uh, be quite by far the, the largest volume of complaints about banking and credit, um, followed by general insurance, because yeah. uh, everybody's got a bank account and everybody's got a uh, general insurance policy such as home policy, car, etc. And sadly in Queensland, natural disasters so, lead to a lot of claims in that space. Yeah, well that's exactly right. Um, yeah, we certainly do live in a, uh, an active state in that regard. Um, well, yeah, we also do financial hardship. That's quite a large jurisdiction for us as well, um, and perhaps less so investments and uh, investments and advice. Um, superannuation makes up uh, approximately nine percent of our business at the moment. Which, which, yeah. in terms of numbers, I, I, my understanding is it's it's more than the superannuation complaints trouble we're getting. Yeah, about forty percent more. Uh, we I think we've received about three and a half thousand. Uh, superannuation complaints since the 1st of November last year and the good news is we've resolved over 40% of them. Which is fantastic yeah. and, and probably suggests, I, I know I've had community workers express to me that they had concerns about how quickly it takes to resolve complaints. Yes. Um, um, I was at a superannuation liaison meeting in Sydney a couple of days ago and uh, the, the superannuation trustees that we were speaking to were saying that they thought that we were uh, much more efficient, much more nimble, uh, and the, the process was a lot less formal. Yep. And they actually like it. Uh, and they, they like the fact that we're dealing with these things quickly, yep. and that consumers are getting, uh, consumers being their members as well, uh, are getting uh, fair outcomes a lot quicker. Which, which is so important for Correct. everybody, because nobody likes things hanging around. Correct, well, justice delayed is no justice at all. Very true, very true. Um, I guess it's also important to look at what you can't look at because you can't look at everything. No, correct. No, uh, we do have um, some uh, exclusions of things that we can't look at. The, the primary one, of course, is we can't look at something that's already been dealt with by a court yep. or a tribunal, such as uh, QCAT, I think it's called. QCAT up here, yes, quite some civil and all the tribunal. Or PCAT or, uh, or MCAT. Uh, or we can't look at anything that a predecessor EDR scheme, such as if you've had a complaint with uh, Financial Ombudsman Service, Credit Investments Ombudsman, or SCT previously, and you had a um, an actual outcome, whether that is a negotiated outcome or a merits decision, uh, we can't revisit that. And, and when you say merits decision, that to me says a recommendation or a determination. Correct. That's absolutely correct. Um, and if you've settled a complaint, in other words, um, you've received a compensation payment, have signed a deed or something like that, that's also outside our jurisdiction now. Because I know, uh, and I've certainly talked to clients who believe that because they're 12, maybe 12 months later, they're not happy with the decision. Yes then people can relook really at it. And the reality is that's just not so. No, that's not true. Um, as a general rule, absolutely not. I mean, look, there might be some outliers there, but mostly no. Um, um, we might look at something, for example, around uh, whether a deed of release was uh, obtained by misleading conduct or something like that, but otherwise no. And, and I guess the advice we both give community workers and financial counsellors out there is if you see people with those questions, 
refer them to either AFCA or us Correct. For, the, for the legal advice, in my case, and for AFCA to look at. Well, that's exactly right. It's always worth having independent eyes and, and to get a definite decision yeah. on that. Um, certainly worth doing that. Yeah, well, and because you, you lose nothing by doing it because it's not going to cost you anything. Correct. And there's either free free services available outside of AFCA or AFCA can look at it depending on what's yeah. easier for the client. And, you, and you, um, if there's any doubt, well, you will get a quick decision in relation to whether we can look at it or not as well. Excellent. The other one that I get a lot yes. is clients saying, um, somebody, I applied for a loan and somebody hasn't given it to me. Yes. And yes. There's really no forum for looking at that. No, there is no forum for because that's a that's a, a, a credit decision, uh, which is a commercial decision, which yes. is something that we can't look at. And the same goes for uh, interest rates. That's uh, another big fee. one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Uh, we can't look at an interest rate. You know, all of the banks charge me 4.5 percent. I think I should get a point, uh, 4.02 or something like that. That's not something that we'll look at. Um, and same goes for fee. Uh, the level of fees, in other words. Um, Oh, if I'd gone to this bank, they would have charged me five dollars for that service, but here they charge me six. We yep. wouldn't look at that either. Yeah, the the only place I can think of where I might be able to get a complaint before I'd be in that space is if, in some way, the money being charged was unconscionable. Correct. Um, if, well, for example, I'll give a because I mostly work in the investments and advice space. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it's um, and as you're aware, there's a, what we call the best interest duty. duty. Yes. Um, we do get complaints and, and we often deal with complaints where a person has been charged a fee that is not in their interest. Well, yeah. the, fa the famous yeah. one from the Royal Commission being charging dead people for us. Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, well, yeah, dead people also uh, charging fees for services that haven't been provided. provided. Yeah. yeah, correct. So that, that is, but for yeah. the most part, beyond, apart from that. Yeah. Correct, unless there's been some sort of misrepresentation about the fee that's been charged. Yes. And that, that's really not about the numbers, that's no. about the action. That's it's about the actual misrepresentation. Correct. Exactly. Yep. All right. So, the other really important thing that I love about Africa is how you can make decisions and yes. this idea of fairness. Yes. Uh, this is something that we're working on uh, quite extensively at the moment. Um, yes, we do, for, we have regard to the law. Uh, we also have regard to relevant codes of practice, um, yep. uh, good industry practice, um, previous decisions that we're not bound by them. We're not yep. uh, uh, not a court that has um, uh, have to follow previous decisions. But we also have to do what is fair in the circumstances. And at the moment, we're trying to put a, uh, an empirical framework around what fairness actually means. Okay. Um, yep. And the, the basis of that is the, the six pillars that um, uh, Mr. Hayne Put in, put, in, put in his report, and that's the framework in which we're building around. And um, it's quite an exciting project, um, yeah. and it's been run by um, uh, uh, Dr. June Smith, um, yeah. who's a lead ombudsman in investments advice and superannuation. Um, and over the next year or so, we hope to put out guidance. We're also talking to the industry about it. Quite a, uh, we know that all the major banks and all the uh, major insurance companies are also looking at this particular question mm. um, and we're engaging and will be engaging in an um, uh, open way with them about okay. what that means and we want to make sure that we're both on the same page. Yeah, that? correct. Yes, again. Um, so, and um, all I can say is just keep an eye on the space because we will be putting out um, uh, approaches on that on our website in due course. Okay, because I guess the thing for community workers out there who are used to dealing with the courts is the courts don't have that ability to consider what's fair in the circumstances. They're more bound by their previous decisions. Correct. Law, Correct. Which is a really important difference. I yes, I, I, I believe so. Um, but we often make decisions which would be uh, in, would not be made the same as what a court would make. Yeah. Um, uh, we would certainly, it, it all goes around, more around the facts of the case uh, yeah. than the legal uh the legal principles behind it. If there's a certain fact in that case, that means that we would go outside the usual legal um, framework for a remedy, for example, we will certainly do it. Yes, and, and I guess one of those those things that happens in that space that is a big issue around at the moment is this idea of how you handle debts following family domestic violence. Yes. And that, that can be quite difficult. It, it's a very difficult thing to go to, and it's something a very difficult subject to um, uh, to deal with as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're um, very conscious of social justice, um, yeah. uh, social justice issues, 
uh, domestic violence is something that we're um, very alive to and we do a lot of training around that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have actual uh, case managers and, and, and managers who are, uh, I suppose, highly trained in that area and they are the ones that usually get those kinds of complaints and deal with them. Uh, in, in a very sensitive way, because yeah. it's because it's a very difficult area. I guess. Oh, it, well, correct, and um, and it's not the only area, obviously, but it's the a, a really predominant uh, yeah. area. Um, if we uh, our case managers are, are, are trained that if they suspect that there is a domestic violence issue uh, in a complaint, that yeah. they go to one of these, uh, I suppose, well, well, for the want of a better term, a domestic violence champion, somebody who's yeah. uh, across this, and sit down and, and they'll workshop a way to deal with this sensitively and, and, and appropriately. And, and I and I also know predecessor schemes had, had guides around how the ombudsman at the time would handle those issues. And I understand yeah. that's developing something similar Correct. down the track. Correct. Now, look, uh, we would be using the predecessor scheme in guides at the moment yeah. until the actual APCA approaches um, are finalised. Um, I think they will be largely very similar. Um, there might be some small changes uh, based on our experience over the time. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. All right, so I guess the other question is when should you lodge a complaint? And, and this, this one I find financial counsels and community workers yeah. can find hard. Yes, yes, sure. When, when do you go and when do you keep negotiating sure. with the lender or insurer? Sure, no, I understand that. Look, um, the first step we always recommend that uh, uh, complain, uh, consumers or their representatives do is actually go back to the, the lender and the, or the insurer or the financial advisor uh, and, and put to them the, uh, the issues that are of concern. Um, and they have usually, uh, under, under uh, the law, they've got 45 days to, uh, to investigate that and to make, uh, hopefully, resolve yeah, the, uh, the issue, which is quite a common thing, uh, or to provide a final response as to why they won't. Yeah, and I, and I guess what I should say there is no response, in effect, is a final response. No, look, uh, under, the, um, under our rules, and, 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 and um, a final response that we should have, finish with, if you don't like our decision, you can go to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, yeah. GPO Box 3, Melbourne, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, that That is on the bottom of the letter. That's a final response. However, you can come to AFCA at any time. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the financial firm before you come to us, um, but we prefer that you do. And, yeah. and that's quite reasonable. I guess where I'd say you should consider stopping going back to the financial firm is if you're repeatedly going back to the financial Correct. firm, that financial firms don't get multiple shots at this. Well, that's exactly right. Look, if you if you find that you've got a response that you don't like and you've gone back to them one one more time and they and they've still come back to you with no, we we mm -hmm. understand our ground. That's that's, that's fine. fine. It, it's time. You know, pull the time to pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, but of course, like I said before, we have many complaints that come through the door that haven't gone to the financial firm first. Our process is designed that if a complaint comes in, even after it's gone through internal dispute resolution, we'll fire it back to the financial firm to have a look at one more time. They get one last opportunity to settle the yeah. issue before we deal with it. And, and then they've got the added protection of being in with AFCA. Correct. While the financial firm has that final look. Exactly. Well, one important uh, point to raise there too is if there's, uh, for example, a recovery proceedings and a credit dispute, yeah. those those proceedings um, are immediately uh, placed on hold. Placed on hold while AFCA deals with the issue. And, and that's the other important thing to think about about when you go in, when you do make that complaint to AFCA, is the further along that court process it gets, yes. the less power AFCA has to do things. Well, you certainly don't want to get to a point where there's a final decision by a court. Yep. That means we can't touch it. Yeah, yep. and so that that's the really important thing for community work because if people are talking about court action, those people need legal advice or to go to AFCA sooner ASAP. Correct. Because that's the only way left in a way of protecting the rights. Yes. Unless there's a valid legal defence available. Correct. In which case they should still get legal advice about whether it's better to continue with the court proceedings yeah. or whether it's better to go to AFCA. Well, I think that's exactly right. But one thing that uh, community workers should be mindful of is that AFCA is a free jurisdiction. Absolutely. And I think that's the important bit. Yes. When, when you're comparing the risk of costs yes. to the risk of no costs, exactly. that's, that's really important. Yeah, and you can be sure that you're going to get some independent eyes to look at what the issue is. Which is, which is so important. 
I guess just quickly before we go into legacy, yes. the other thing to be aware of, correct, is there's various types of processes that are in Africa. Correct. Now, um, we probably the most exciting one for us is the fast track yeah. uh, uh, jurisdiction, which is for uh, uh, a place where there's a single issue mm. and the claim amount is fifteen thousand dollars or under, yeah. um, and that is quite a compressed um, time, frame. time frame to be done. But, uh, look. The majority of those cases were done and dusted within between 60 and 90 days. Yep. Um, and a final result is, is, is pretty, has been provided correct. Uh, yep. All the issue has been resolved one way or the other. Yep. Uh, and then there's a different process of financial difficulty. Correct. Um, yes, there is very much a different. Uh, it's very much uh, focused on conciliation and negotiation. Um, uh, however, if it can't be conciliated and negotiated, we certainly get a written decision out yep. reasonably quickly. I guess the comment I'd make for community workers in that space is be aware that some disputes are about more than just financial difficulties. Oh, there can be absolutely. that and there can be, say, irresponsible end of it. Oh, time. correct. Exactly. Uh, they're, they're often um, hand in glove. Yes, yeah, uh, very much uh, so. Financial, uh, financial difficulty is often the result of irresponsible lending. Uh, yes. Is our experience, yes. Yeah, so it's always important with your clients to remember to raise both those issues just to suss out. Oh, correct whether it's one or both. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, just to finish off on this, I guess the other thing to think about, and you mentioned this before, often financial firms will come back with an offer to resolve the dispute yes. before you guys start looking at it. Absolutely, and um, and that happens. Well, look, we don't have some real numbers around it, but we do know it happens quite, uh, quite a lot. Um, and we're quite happy for that to occur, of course. Yeah. Um, the, the reality is, is that, um, we also still get complaints that people have received an offer and they still want independent eyes to have a look at them. Yeah, and that's fine. We don't mind doing that, of course. Uh, but um, more often than not, these offers are quite good, uh, and it's probably worth um, sitting down with your uh, with your client and and saying to them, well, this is actually a really good offer that you got here, and you, and they need to weigh up, for example, their uh, time and effort to get perhaps a better result. Their whole reality yeah. testing on you, which we both do all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. All right. So, I guess the thing now is, if, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, get Al, I'll get Alan back in, um, and we'll go and start looking at this new legacy. Just, you know, yes, and and we're going to test first up how much people know about this already before we start talking. Okay, so you should be able to vote there. Africa has time limits on when consumers can bring complaints. Are you aware of it or are you not aware of it? And did you know the time limits are changing? On Monday. Yes, mm. Monday. Yeah, good timing for this <laughs> webinar. Yeah, yes, exactly. Just in time webinar, we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, looks like most of you have voted, so I'm just going to close off this poll and you can see the results on your screen now. Yeah, I've got to say that I find it interesting that 70% of people are not aware of this and, um, mm. and, um, and, that, and it's good that you are now, um, mm. so um, yeah. Mm. All right, so uh, let's, yeah. let's dive into it. I guess yeah. the starting point is what are the current time limits? Current time limits, as a general rule, are six years from the uh, well, the, the earlier of, mm -hmm. six years from the actual or reasonable awareness of the loss. Yep. Uh, for example, in an insurance case, that's often fairly easy. Yeah, if you yes. have a car accident, you're aware of the loss. Of the yeah, or if the cyclone comes through, you're, you're pretty, pretty much aware of the pretty loss. Pretty quick. Yeah, it's exactly well. The loss actually arises where the claim is denied. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's fairly easy. It comes a little bit more difficult investments and advice yes. complaints, for Absolutely. example. But, um, but, yeah, six years or two years from um, the, the uh, financial firm's final IDR response. And that was that letter we were talking about earlier Correct. that says... This is a final decision. Yeah, correct. That. And, the, and the letters actually have to also spell out that you have two years from the date That's of this letter yep. to, to lodge your complaint. Um, which, which is really important. Yeah, it is. If that letter doesn't have it on there, we probably wouldn't um, consider it as being our final response. Yeah, correct, absolutely. Um, we won't dive into the difference yeah. to your graduation time limits, but no. yeah, well, it's worth saying they exist. They certainly exist. Well, look, I'll, I'll 
The big one is death benefits, yep. uh, 28 days from the date of the uh, trustee's decision. Which is which is really narrow, so really important for people yeah, to be aware you, you need to be aware of that um, yeah, because it, it needs to be done very quickly. And if it doesn't get done very quickly, then it's correct. No opportunity. And the, and the trustee will have that at the bottom of their letter as well. Yes. Yes. I, I guess the thing why we why it's yes. talking about yes. is often in that scenario people are grieving. And oh, correct. And they've got other things on their mind. mind. Absolutely. I, I would agree with that. Um, so important to be aware of that. So that's that's where we are now. Where are we moving to? Okay, starting from next Monday, uh, APGA will be uh, uh, able to look at complaints dating back to uh, uh, eligible complaints uh, or about conduct that occurred from 1st of January 2008. Um, so obviously some of this conduct uh, would be outside our usual time limits. Yes. Uh, so we are now able to, uh, we, we're calling it our extended jurisdiction or legacy jurisdiction. Um, and I guess I guess what the thing about the 1 January 2008 is, my understanding is that lines up with the Royal Commission. That lines up. Yeah, yeah, well, in, indeed it does, but it also uh, lines up with the you know, global financial crisis. Right. And also and true. Yeah, exactly. And it's something, uh, I think it was something that the government policy was to to flush you know flush the system clean. I suppose is the best way of describing it. And give people one last opportunity to make sure that uh, they're not being a victim of, of wrongdoing. Mm. But I guess the important bit is this isn't a permanent jurisdiction, no, is it? No, it's only for one year. So we will only be accepting uh, complaints from the first of uh, July, i.e. next Monday, through the thirtieth of June, two thousand twenty 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 twenty. Correct. So. Um, if you make a complaint on the 1st of July next year, you're too late. Okay. Mm. And to, to put some time some times for this, for yes. people, we're now the 28th of June 2019. Yes. As we as we sit today, you can only look at complaints dating back to 28 June 2013, if my maths is right. Well, yeah. with, with some exceptions. With some exceptions. If, you know, we can only look back now at uh, uh, loss that's occurred. Yeah, from that date. From that date. Yeah, so, to you. so we're now looking a, a lot further back. back yes. Which, yeah. which for consumers who yes. might not have been in a position to explore their dispute at the yes. time, well, this is really important. Absolutely. Very important. Um, vitally important. So um, it, it's certainly, um, we, we certainly don't have any real understanding of how many uh, complaints we're going to get, but that's, um, we, we know that it's going to be in the thousands, obviously. Um, but this is something that, um, is really important and, and we're, we're gearing up to deal with it. Yeah, and, and really important for people who, for example, we were talking about family violence before. Yes. That that can affect people for years. Well, absolutely. And it might now only be, they might be in a position where now they can look at something from back in that time. Absolutely. Whereas at the time, no, no, that's there were right. much more important Well, that, that's exactly right. There would have been much more important things to deal with. Um, but now this might be an opportunity to go back and, and um, make sure that everything is above board when dealing with the financial plan. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I guess the starting point I think both of us would say is if somebody's in that position, they lose nothing by asking whether they fit. Absolutely not. No. Mm -hmm. no. Uh, it's worth having independent eyes to look at whether this is uh, something we can look at or can't look at. Absolutely. And, and that could either be community legal centres and legal aid, or it could be straight to Africa, and neither is particularly worried about no. what suits people to do. No, no, we're certainly not. No, we're quite mm. happy to take complaints on, yes. And, mm. and how that works. Yes. I guess the thing to say, though, is it yeah. doesn't cover everything. Absolutely not, no. The, the key words there are eligible complaints. Yeah. So there's certain rules around what we can and can't look at. Um, which you specifically changed your rules. <laughs> which we have, yes. We've had to uh, bring in some new rules. Um, and uh, one of the handouts that have been uh, put up um, gives some broad guidance around the kinds of things we can and can't look at. Mm. Uh, for example, um, the first question you've got to ask yourself is the financial firm a current member? If the answer to that question is yes, well, we could probably look at it. Uh, next question is, um, did the conduct occur on or after the 1st of January? Then yes. I think, and, yeah. and I guess one of the things to talk about there yeah. is sometimes the financial firm might, might not be a member anymore because they don't exist anymore. Yeah, correct, or they've gone, they've gone mm -hmm. to liquidation or, or whatever reason, yeah, they, they're no longer licensed or, yeah. And, and, in, and, and when you start talking about that sort of stuff, yeah. part of the reason you, you don't look at that is yeah. it's in a sense a fruitless complaint. Correct. Well, it's not only that. Uh, our, our jurisdiction is only over our members. Yeah, uh, the, the, the financial firms that uh, 
who I have, uh, for example, an Australian financial service, like bank and banking license or uh, credit license, yeah. uh, they must be a member of an EDR scheme. Uh, so, but if you don't have that license anymore, you don't have to be. So then mm-hmm. they're not. And they're not, and yeah. that's the end of the story. Correct, unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately. Um, other sorts of stuff, though, that come within it. What, what else do we need to look at? Uh, things like, um, uh, uh, are you a consumer yeah. or a small business or a, 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 a primary producer? Um, they're important uh, uh, points to make as well. Um, and, and I guess one of the things about primary producers yeah. is the fact that they might have been through a mediation process yeah. under state law doesn't prevent them coming Correct. to Africa. Absolutely not. They can still come to Africa even after that. That's true. Um, now, the things that we can't look at, for example, if there's been, if it has been previously decided by a court or a tribunal or predecessor scheme, um, there's been um, the complaints being previously settled between the parties. We certainly can't look at that unless, of course, the settlement has been uh, initiated yeah, by some bad conduct. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, and, and we can't look at the superannuation death benefits yep. uh, complaints, unfortunately. And finally, um, Another thing we can't look at is about uh, solely about um, a privacy act breach. It has to have something else attached to it. So yeah. it, it yeah. needs a credit element or no, an credit credit element, element or an investment element. element. Correct, attached to it, absolutely. But if it has that element, you'd look at both yes. the and the privacy? Or yes. no, 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 no. I think we'd be looking at both, it, but it's just solely. I think the important Pro- word is solely. solely about a privacy act breach, yes. Okay. Yeah. No, that's making, uh, that's making some sense. So. I, I guess what I'm going to, yeah. I'm expecting to get a lot of inquiries yes. about is where people didn't like the original decision. Yes. Um, yeah, look, unfortunately, we can't revisit. It's, uh, it's just not possible. No, it's not possible. Correct. But again, if there's any doubts. It come come to, yeah. come and seek help. Would yes. be Absolutely. Would no, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. At least get some advice around, around the question. Absolutely. Because... The last thing any of us want to do, mm-hmm. and I'm sure the community workers out there are the same, is to raise false hope. Correct. No, you won't want to be raising false hope. You'd be just saying, well, look, one of the questions I'll be first asking the client that comes to uh, that comes to you is, have you previously got a decision about this? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is yes, at least get a copy of it, have a look at it, and then give advice uh, based okay. on that. On yeah. that, absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more about yeah. that. Um, and, and the other thing worth doing in that space is, uh, and this is an error I find tricky. Sometimes people have gone bankrupt on these debts. Yes, yes, I mean, it is a tricky area. That's, no that's where that becomes yeah, well, very well, tricky. Well, look, um, uh, there's a lot of lot of interesting things around that. But please, that uh, uh, I, I would still recommend people who have gone through bankruptcy. Uh, I mean, they've come out the other side. So, that's what I mean. They're, they're most importantly, they've come out the other side. Please come back and, and let us have a look at it. Um, uh, if you're still in bankruptcy, unfortunately, uh, you, need yeah, the you, permission. you need the trustee's consent to do it, correct? Yeah. And, and um, any compensation that would be paid would be paid to, to the, the bankruptcy trustee. trustee, yes. But I guess what we're both saying yeah. is bankruptcy does not prevent you no. from having these complaints. No, absolutely not. No, but there might be just a couple more hurdles to climb over. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I guess the other thing we're thinking about in that space is part nine debt agreements right. are yes. going to be slightly different yeah. to bankruptcy in the yes. sense that... Yes. There's arguably an agreement. Yeah, well, correct. Again, I would say, look, at least let us have a look at it, or, at least, or at least get advice on it, and um, um, and we will deal with it if it comes across. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And and it's important to get either the the AFCA guidance or the legal advice at that point, correct. because those areas, if you don't handle them the right way, yeah, that can implement that can impact greatly on the client. Correct. Absolutely. And and we're all in the interest, and in, this includes industry, actually. We're all in the interest of ensuring the client gets the best result. Possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that's really important. All right. I guess where we start to now is we're a bit open season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some look forward to it. Send us through your questions. Yeah, indeed. Um, and while we're waiting for more questions to come through, we'll, we did get some pre prepared ones. And yes, we, had, we did. And we have had some questions come through. Yes. So maybe we deal with, we'll deal with some of those as we go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll we'll have a look at a couple of the pre prepared questions. Yeah. Uh, the, the one I like the most, we'd, uh, we'd like to know about legacy complaints. Thanks. And my answer to that is, well, where do I start? <laughs> but, but we've, <laughs> hope, hope, hope we've, done, we've, done, hope we've so dealt with that so far. Exactly. Yeah. Look, if you've got any uh, questions, uh, uh, you want more detail, 
beyond what we've already done, please feel free to ask. Um, the irresponsible loan, lending one and what remedy you get towards a really yeah, that interesting is, one. It is, inter it is an interesting one, look, and, and this very much depends on the type of um, uh, loan or the individual circumstances of the case. Mm. Um, but um, and look, I'll give an example uh, where a, a loan has been obtained to purchase a motor vehicle and there's a security over it. Mm. Our usual practice would be uh, to uh, require uh, the, the car to be sold or surrendered to the lender. Yep. We will assess the consumer's cost, that mostly being interest and fees and the benefits, which is usually measured the difference between the price of the motor vehicle and the, and the current retail price. If there's any um, residual debt, we would ask the lender to wipe it. Uh, uh, and if there's any surplus, uh, then the lender is to pay it to the consumer, um, which we think is a pretty fair way of dealing with it. And, and, and accounts for the fact that you have had some benefit from having the car. Absolutely, uh, that, and that's correct. And um, and that would work the same way, say, for, and that we have a question yeah. about payday loans. Correct, oh, definitely. Everything is a benefits versus expenses analysis in, in this kind of complaint, because mm -hmm. it literally is a no transaction case. It's, um, you know, if, if this, inappropriate borrowing had not have occurred, or well, you wouldn't have got the loan, you wouldn't have had the benefit, and you wouldn't have had the expenses, so. Yeah, yeah. and say, so, for example, if you, and um, the questions around fees charged on payday loans. Yes. yes. If, if that was irresponsibly done, yeah. we're just talking paying the principal back, can't we? Yeah, pretty much, I think, yeah. That's in, in, in a nutshell. nutshell. In a nutshell, yeah. But again, it's a benefits versus it's, expenses principle. Absolutely. Yeah, because if you've got the money from a loan and you've spent it. Well, and you've got the benefit of that, of, of an item in your hand, hand, then that needs to be accountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, another interesting area is where there's a, uh, a loan for an investment or business purpose, yep. uh, which is quite common. Um, the consumer, we, we say, well, the consumer's got the benefit of the, of the, of the principal amount of the money, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and that's got to be taken into account, but the lender can't recover the interest and fees. And we certainly don't, and the consumer continues to carry the, the risk of the business, the business risk or the investment risk. risk. Which, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does, yeah, exactly. Because you're, by any investment you do, you're taking a risk. Absolutely. That's precisely what it's all about, yes. And that's why you rely on good financial advice. advice. And that's why you True. also that's rely that. on, and also rely on good credit um, practices, absolutely. Um, I guess, and while we're talking about excessive fees, there's a question that comes through around insurance premiums and funeral insurance, which yes. I know is a hot topic following Royal, the Royal Commission. Absolutely. And I, I guess the space there is what we're looking at is what the client thought they were getting and what's fair in the circumstances. Yeah, correct. It's, it's about, um, most of these cases tend to be about mis-selling. Yep, um, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, look, if there's a clear case of mis-selling, we, we would certainly be uh, unwinding that transaction. Um, so, yeah. Because often in my experience, people think they're purchasing a savings plan. They don't yeah, actually think correct. they're purchasing an insurance product. product. Exactly, and, and that's quite a common thing. Um, a lot of um, a lot of cases that we see it involves an element of um, predatory behaviour, cold calling, yeah, that kind of thing. So, yeah. uh, door knocking being a classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, yes. Re remote in regional Re Queensland. Uh, correct. And for that matter, other states that are listening into us as well. Absolutely. Yes. Really, really be uh, an important one there. Um, I guess the other thing that this idea of We've just had a question that wants us to revisit this bankruptcy idea and yes. when they can deal with people in bankruptcy and what types right. of complaints. And, and I guess the thing is, if it's within your jurisdiction, we'll, we will deal with it. If yeah. it's within our jurisdiction, absolutely. Um, it's um, it, look, it, it's a complicated question. I wish I could give a, a simple answer, mm. um, but unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated. Bankruptcy is always has an interesting overlay. Uh, and, and it creates extra issues to deal with, absolutely. But, but the takeaway message is lodge the complaint. It is, it is indeed, yes. Excellent, all right. And, and I guess the other thing I should add, people that are listening in, if the, there's specific questions about specific cases you have, mm -hmm. shoot those through to us afterwards and we can talk about the specific cases afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Because that's not really something we can do and, in this forum on the webinar. You can send that to the email address community so C O L M U N I T Y dot legal ed L E G A L E D at legalaid.qrd.gov.au and I'll filter out those questions and send them to whoever is the most appropriate person to respond. Yep. Okay. That's great. 
I guess looking at the questions coming through, yes. payday, payday lending keeps coming up a fair bit. Yes. And I think that's because the types of people we see out there in the community who come to organisations like Legal Aid and community groups are, tend to be in financial trouble. Oh, correct. And they're, and they're vulnerable people. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah they're, um, for example, could be long-term unemployed. Yep. Um, yeah, exactly. Vulnerable people. And I, I guess my advice there in that space is if somebody has a payday loan, those payday lenders have very specific obligations Correct. different to other lenders. Yes, they do. Yes. That they have to comply with. Yes. And if they haven't complied with those very specific obligations, there's a problem and there's usually a remedy available for the client. Correct. So if you see people in that space, at the very least, they should get legal advice and, and potentially if it's not resolved, these matters end up in that. Correct. And, and, and it's really important to to ensure that consumers who are in that vulnerable space and these would be the most vulnerable i think we'd all say i would say so yes get that help yeah. because it the reality is and I'll, I'll amalgamate some case cases that i've seen the reality is if somebody's on Centrelink and they're paying 50 or 60 percent of their income in rent and they can't afford to buy food there's no way on heaven's earth that they can afford to make repayments on a lot of food correct I, I would, in, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, I think that's probably right. So, um, well, actually, not probably. It is right. Yeah. And, and the reality is that payday lenders now can't say they didn't know because they have to get three months worth of declined bank statements. Yes. And then actually look at the bank statements. Yeah, exactly right. It's not just a simple matter of collecting the bank statements. It's actually uh, some analysis has to occur <laughs> on those. Yes. And, and the reality is, given a large percentage of us pay for everything by direct debit or VPay. Yes. Those bank statements show an awful lot. Well, they, they most certainly do. Yeah. About what our expenses are. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really important for people to be aware of. So there's a there's a lot that AFCA legal aid community legal centres can do for people who are having issues with payday loans. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, this is an unfortunate reality. Is a lot of uh, the most vulnerable people uh, probably don't know about the existence of AFCA and and, um, and this opportunity to for somebody to an independent eyes to look over the what's happening. Which is so important for why well, it's so important for community workers who are out there listening to this to be aware of that, correct, and make sure they get to people like you and I. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's really, really, really important takeaway from this. Um, other questions? What have we got? Oh, non-financial loss. That's always a classic. That is, a, that, and and that's um, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we've got a very limited jurisdiction in relation to non-financial loss. Um, the most that we can award is five thousand uh, dollars for non-financial loss. And the test that we have uh, for that is that there has to be an unusual amount of um, uh, in, inconvenience and um, an unusual amount of uh, stress and anxiety caused uh, by the conduct. Yes, yes. The, con the conversation I always, I often have, regularly have in that space yeah. is people want punitive damages and that's just not something no, that's happening. No, no, we're, we're not into punishing, uh, yes. we're into compensating um, and, and look, it, it, Five thousand um, dollars, in some instances, perhaps would not be enough, but in most instances, would most certainly cover uh, the, the level of um, inconvenience and anxiety and stress that, that the conduct has caused. Yes, yeah, excellent. And the next question is an, another interesting one that comes up when lenders sell debt. Yes, I, I did see that question come up before. And is there anything that? Uh, um, that AFCA could do to stop that from happening? Well, probably not. Unfortunately, uh, this is a commercial reality, and is that um, banks will sell debt or assign debt to a, a third party. Yep. Um, and, and unfortunately, that often causes a bit of a, a delay in things. Um, the, the, only, the only caveat I'd argue against yeah. that happening is if there's a dispute already with you, oh, that, correct. Be, they, that yeah. can't sell it. No, well, that's it. Well, clearly, no. If the disputes with us, they uh, no, selling that debt on is is probably a very uh, is definitely not something and, that we would. And, if, and if, if I was representing somebody, yeah. I'd be arguing that I should buy that debt. Back. Well, well, correct. I would be arguing that as well. Um, I think that's. Um, I'm not sure whether I, I don't actually work in this space, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm I'm not sure whether that's actually happened. And if it has, I'm, I'm sure I'm, we've I'm, dealt with it appropriately. And I'm yeah. getting I'm getting the vibe from the question yeah. that it might have happened yeah. out there, which is a shame. Okay, well, if it that happens again, and that's uh, yeah, look, if it happens again, please raise it with your case manager immediately, and if you need to, escalate it to their manager. 
Yeah, because that that's not okay. Because you can't you can't almost pass the buck. No, that's exactly right, and it, and it does actually cause delay. Yeah, yeah. because you've got to work out who's currently got well. That's exactly right. it's unnecessary delay. Yeah, I, I would say that which impacts right. on the consumer, impacts on resolution of dispute. Correct. And nobody's keen on yeah. delay. Yeah, no, absolutely not. All right, another one that comes through is about the banking code. And it's not yes. just the banking code you guys can look at, is it? No, no, well, no, we've got responsible lending obligations, so we're talking about consumer credit uh, laws. Uh, yeah, the banking code, there's also um, going outside the banking area, we've got insurance uh, code. General insurance code. code? That's exactly right, general insurance code. There's also um, the FPA code for financial advice code. So we do look at uh, and they tend to be quite indicative, well, they are indicative of good industry practice, practice, which is something that we must look at in every case. And, and I guess the important thing about the banking code is it's probably got stuff in there about protecting small business that might not be reflected in the, the credit code. Correct. It tends to, it, it, in many ways, it unpacks the credit code a little bit more and gives a little bit more flesh to the obligations. To, in correct, it. exactly. And, and, I, and I would say that's the truth in uh, the case of any code, uh, code of conduct. The whole idea, it, it talks about ethical. Uh, concerns more than it does legal concerns. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next question that's coming through is is more of a process question, and and it's about what happens if the client doesn't like an African decision. And I guess that depends on the point at which correct. we are in the dispute. Yeah, well, correct. Well, look, it's literally uh, when it comes time to um, hopefully most of our complaints will settle um, by um, uh, negotiation or, or after conciliation, mm. and most of them do. Um, however, if that's not at all possible. We have a two step Process. The yep. first step is, um, uh, is we'll issue what's called a recommendation, which is literally the, um, the opinion of the case worker or the case manager that was yep. looking at the case on how they think the complaint should be resolved. Yep. Um, and it's only binding on both parties if both parties accept it. Yep. So if both parties accept that decision, well, uh, it's settled on that basis. If one or either uh, one or both of the parties does not accept it, it goes through to a final decision. So there's this in, um, uh, internal uh, appeal mechanism. Yep. Um, more complex cases will go to a panel, yep. uh, which consists of an ombudsman, uh, and a, a consumer representative, and an industry representative. Uh, and the less complex cases will go uh, and, to an and, ombudsman. And I probably should be clear at this stage. Yes. I actually yes. sit as a consumer representative in investments like the superannuation panel. Yep. And yes. Can vouch for how good that process is. Yeah, it's quite robust, of course. Yes, yeah. and um, and it's uh, a good and, and the conversations that occur in those panel meetings are very um, uh, robust as well, and they and they and they cover all sorts of uh, cover matters. all of the potential issues yeah. that the complaint raises. Absolutely, which is really important. Yeah, but once we get to a determination, yeah, that's a, a different story. It's a fine. Well, look, uh, for a consumer, if they don't like the outcome of that, if they don't have to accept the decision. And, st and their legal rights are preserved, yep. uh, and they can still go to court or any other tribunal that may be available to them. And, and I guess that that's probably a good point for people to get legal advice because the reality of court is it's very expensive. Well, we're correct, it is. And um, look, um, we, our experience is that most people, even if they get a decision that's not in their favour, they, they're content with the fact that independent eyes have had a look yeah. at it, uh, and that they're now and, and that. They can be satisfied that the financial firm has acted appropriately, um, and that's probably a really good point to yeah. explore just briefly. Yeah. And that's this idea that not every consumer complaint wins it out, and uh, we should be really clear about that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, I think we're sort of running somewhere in the region of fifty-five percent of complaints that go through to a final decision are in favour of uh, the complainant or the consumer, mm -hmm. and forty-five percent in favour of the uh, financial firm. And, and that's and that's really important because it probably says those it probably says the really clear disputes are being resolved before they get to final determination. Absolutely. And the 50-50 ones are the ones that you guys are having to well correct. That's that's usually the case, and um, it tends to be yeah, very much um, uh, some some go through it which are fairly clear cut still, but mostly it's um yeah it's, it's that borderline, borderline line, stuff, yeah borderline stuff, grey area stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Um, another question has come through about debt recovery guidelines that ASIC and ACCC, that yeah. would feed into that good Absolutely. industry practice Absolutely. we were talking about. Absolutely, yeah, we certainly have regard to that. Okay. Certainly would. Um, there's another question comes through about legal representation and whether there's leave needed. And no, 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 we're not that formal, really. No, no, we're not that formal, no. Um, look, 
the, the jurisdiction is actually free to consumers and, and we're uh, well versed in dealing with unrepresented um, uh, complainants uh, and consumers. Um, we actually uh, are able to assist to a certain degree uh, the framing of the case and everything for them. Um, but so that doesn't stop lawyers. No, no, it doesn't stop lawyers from coming in, but, uh, but lawyers who actually deal with them must be very clear with their client that, um, that there, there's only a very limited uh, availability for the recovery of costs. Um, Which is very important. Yeah, and, um, and we have certain rules around recovery of costs. We can award only up to, uh, we, can, we call it a contribution to legal costs. Uh, and that's only up to five thousand um, dollars, and literally we'd, we'd need to see one that the participation of the lawyer was actually necessary, and secondly that um, that they actually value added. I suppose in a lot of ways it's an important yeah. factor that we take into account. And, and look, representation isn't restricted to lawyers. I've no, no. the other really important. It is well going mean, financial counsels have certainly done it and um, done it very well. well my, my, experience. Yeah, yeah, my experience as well. Um, uh, same for um, uh, yeah. Financial advisors now representing their new client. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean they they certainly do that. So it's not not an unusual. I, thing. I have seen health workers do it as they well. Me. Yep, absolutely. So it's it's one of those things. If if you feel the client needs the help, there's no harm in helping them through the well, process. Absolutely not. No. Um, and if you can't do it, there are other services available who are happy to prove people through the process. Absolutely, and 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 Africa can talk. Consumers and after is one, and after is one yeah, and we do talk people through consumer uh, through the process. We actually uh, are very open about how we deal with complaints, yeah. um, and we certainly um, give people uh, reasonable um, information about what they can expect to experience in the, um, the jurisdiction. Okay, um, I'll just put a final call out for questions because we're nearing we're nearing the end of time this morning. Um, if after the end of the webinar you have other questions that come to mind. Please send them to that email, which I might yeah, get. Yeah, I'll say it again. Now. So it's community, C O N N -N U N I T Y dot legal ed at legalaid dot q l d dot gov dot au. All right. So just while we're waiting to see if there's any final questions, we just should check we've dealt with all all of the pre-prepared ones. And we we talked a bit about DV and joint loans before. Yes. And I know the financial ombudsman did have a guide around how those complaints should be handled. Yes, no, look, uh, there is, um, we haven't republished it as an yeah. AFCA uh, um, guide yet, but it is still on the old uh, FOS website. Uh, so if you want to go to um, fos.org.au and just do a search, uh, I think there's an area of that website called Publications. There is. It, it will be in there and we still have regard to that. Um, if, and I should say, if anybody has any trouble finding that or any of those guides, mm -hmm. let us know and we can send you the right the right email and the, the right, right contact. contact. Exactly, yes, absolutely. Um, one final question has come through about hearings by regional, hearings for people in regional areas. And I mean, access to the regions yes. is so important for all of us. Correct. But the reality is it's not often when you go out, you go out and see people face to face. And that's no, no, not often. Um, General insurance is an area where uh, where that occurs quite often. Um, yeah. um, the ombudsman and, um, and certain senior managers or certain uh, um, experienced case managers will actually go out to disaster areas and actually talk and to people and, and, and tell them what their what their rights are. And and Africa yeah. and Lake Lake Queensland yeah. have been up in Townsville a number of times yes. since yes. the, the yeah. horrible events of, of the floods earlier this year. Yeah, correct. We'll both continue to be there. That's exactly right. So, but it, look, if, if something unfortunate would happen in your actual area, you can expect, um, and, and, and you know, general insurance issues are arising, um, you know, we're, we're very alert to that and we actually um, engage directly with the community wherever possible. Um, but if where that doesn't happen and we're doing conciliation, I've done plenty of phone conciliations, yeah, yeah, which, right. which yeah. are quite effective in my experience. Well, they are actually. Um, telephone conciliations is, is a real success story for us. Um, uh, uh, we have quite high resolution rates when a telephone conciliation occurs. Yep. Um, I've, I've conducted them, I've been in many of them, and, um, and they're quite powerful because it, it gives both sides the opportunity to, to tell their story. Which is really a really important um, uh, thing about conciliations. And consumers feeling like they're being heard is so important as part of that process. Correct. And um, and and I tell you now that a lot of financial firms, when they actually hear the person's voice and hear what the story is, it has a it has quite an effect. Yeah. 
because it's it's a lot it's a, it's a lot easier to dis, to dismiss a story that's in writing. It's a lot harder to dismiss it when it's coming from the person that happened to yeah. Well, that, absolutely, that's my experience. Yes. All right. Um, if there's no final questions, I think yeah. I'll pass over Ellen to wrap it up for us. Can I swap chairs with you? <laughs> yes. I, I guess I'd quickly say our takeaway is if in doubt, get your clients to get legal advice or get them to talk into Africa yeah, yeah. because at the very least then they'll get an opinion about Correct. whether they've got any rights. I would, I would say first port of call through our 1800 number and, yep. uh, and speak to one of our uh, very excellent phone staff. Excellent. I will swap chairs with Alvin. Right. Okay, thank you everyone. So there are our contact details if you need to get in touch with our services, office locations. Now I just want to quickly give a plug for our next webinar. It's on the 22nd of August and it's with on Andrea from uh, Paul's Civil Law Team and she is going to be doing a webinar around the NDIS. So if you're someone who helps clients with NDIA appeals, then um, that will be the webinar for you to join. So that's 22nd of August, um, and our community legal education team runs 12 webinars a year. We try to run 12, maybe 11 this year. Um, so if you need to, if you're interested in learning more about what we do, then please subscribe to our webinars mailing list, um, and I'll send through those links in a follow-up email to all of you. So you'll also receive a copy of the PowerPoint slides in that email and I'll also send through a YouTube recording of today's webinar. So if you missed anything, if you had to jump out on a phone call or something, you can watch this whole webinar again on our YouTube channel and I'll send you the link as soon as we put it up there. Okay, I think that's it. Thank, Thank you. you to our wonderful presenters. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you, Alan. We'll see you at the next webinar, everyone.